Well, welcome, welcome to the Art of Storytelling. What's happening, YT? What's your question? Okay, um, so I invited my mom and my auntie to listen in. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. Show sure. that's what it's for. Show sure. welcome. So um, today, right now, um, I wasn't able to get a hold of our original Art of Storytelling guests, but I had a backup. You know, with Macam, we always come with a backup. So um, when you come in, first of all, everybody's uh. Everybody's mics are going to be muted just so that we can make sure that we can hear our guests, you know, completely and fully. Um, and if you have any questions, you can hit your participate button. And then there are some little emojis that you can use just to get our uh, attention, you know, just so you can ask your questions, because this is a conversation. All right. So we're going to hear the choices that Jamar made as our guests that eventually, and it's still making him as a young man. So um, Jamar, go ahead, I'm gonna let you take it over, man. Sweet, sweet, can everybody hear me? <clears throat> all right, all good. Well, I mean, I see some familiar, familiar faces on here. So, I mean, I'm not gonna be as shy, <laughs> but more so like, I would say my life has been a real coaster thus far, you know? Um, if I also start from the very beginning, I'm gonna keep keep that part short and brief because I feel like the meet and greet is like, I mean, the meat of it is more so when I get into middle school and high school. But um, I was born and raised in Denver. Well, I wasn't, I was born in Denver. I was raised a little bit all over the country because I, I was raised in a military family. So I always got the chance to travel to a different city. Uh, with that being said, I never been like closed minded by just like what I've seen in just one city, you know? Uh, there, that was like the biggest thing that kind of like stuck out to me as being a young person being able to travel was that there were so many different worlds. When I say worlds, there are different like perspectives and like things we wouldn't even imagine or in someone else's like life that we like we would take a granted for or we would take advantage of or we are just like lacking of, you know? So it's like when we see things in different places and we, we, we really wish we could have like brought that home with us, you know? Or that little aspect and so as like as i'm continuing to like live my life i started traveling the east coast then i went to the west coast and then when i turned like 16 i went from the west coast back to the east coast and so i've seen a little bit of everything like from memphis tennessee louisiana shreveport uh like wacko texas you know dallas uh oakland california detroit michigan chicago illinois New York City, New York, you know, like I've been a little bit everywhere. I've been able to like learn a little bit from everyone, you know? And so I say that to like bring me to, to my next point when it comes to like education within within DPS. Uh, my grandparents were always big on like making me, making sure I always stayed in DPS. So I was never behind in school or anything like that. If I had to like switch from a different city from time to time. So they made an arrangement to where I would travel during the summer during the summers of like me growing up. And then, can everyone hear me still? Okay, just making sure. And so I started like, okay, so I would travel during the summers and then I will be like here in Colorado for like the school. And so <clears throat> I went to majority, I went to a private school uh, and that was like Union Baptist or others known, others know it as uh, Excel Institute. And it was all black school. So I would say that was like really where I started to gain my own identity, you know? And I talked about identity because like in today's age, people, we have all of these images like pushed on us through like media or just like our surroundings or the people we hang around. And we have like this idea of who we are, you know? So I would say that's like kind of where I really gather my own identity at this school. Uh, it was rent, it was started by Mr. Bowman. And then it was like passed down to Miss Wilson, and she was a like a black like uh, our black our black principal, you know. So she was very stern on us about like reading the scriptures and all of that. Like every single day, we walked into the school, and so like from that, like it was just a tremendous experience because I met like all of my teachers were black at that point. Uh, like we had a few like white kids, Spanish kids, like with kids of like. Latino descent in our like classes, but where for was the most this part, at? we were all of color. Hello? And where was this at? This is at, this was here in Denver, uh, Excel Institute. 
Okay. And you said all your teachers was black? All of them. Okay. Okay. So like like I said, so the idea of like who I was or who I could be was never like limited or like capped, you know? Uh, I would say that's like the biggest point I want to bring out. And so with that being said, the next school my family put me into would be a military school. And it was, a well, it was like a reform. I don't know what it was, to be honest with you guys. But it was a military style school. And this was by the names of Sons Viola International Academy out here. And so um, <laughs> no offense, but I feel like my family got bamboozled. Uh, they told us we was going to travel the world. All we had was a warehouse at the end of the day. Uh, we had dirt as our playground. We wore suit and ties every day. I mean, like we had all of, like the brightest kids from like Montbello, Green Valley, and we had some of the worst kids from Montbello and Green Valley. So, I mean, I'm gonna just leave it at that. Like I seen like I seen it all at that school. That's like really where like man, I'm like I'm a man. I'm supposed to be a man out here. Like it was an all boys <laughs> school. Let me mention that. So it was I was hanging around with testosterone all day. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> uh, I'm blessed to be like not in that same position for sure um, but more so that's where it's like I met some of the most phenomenal teachers as well and I bring that up because like we had a science teacher and like I, we had a military site school so we was talking about like doves or hawks you know are you a dove or a hawk you know like do you like war do you like peace you know we was talking like that like that's that's like just like the settings we we were in you know but mm -hmm. at the school, they kind of gave us the chance to see a little bit of everything. That's the one thing I will give them credit for, like Dedrick Sims, was that he kind of brought in a lot of people from a lot of different areas and expertise. So we had, like, for instance, a martial, we had, like, we had this STEM teacher who also did uh, app creation and, like, all of the coding for DC Comics and all of that, you know? So it's just like, you're super smart, but you also know all of these, like, Taekwondo, uh, just martial arts that can like like the Navy SEAL was like paying him to train them basically and the CIA and all of them mm -hmm. and so we was getting like our martial arts classes from him and I actually still take my classes from him to this day you know I mean well mm -hmm. not with this COVID-19 going on they canceled that too but like, as soon I, as see, uh, I see my man Tank got a question uh uh yeah how do I check or I got him go ahead what's all up right, um my question was going to be with you living uh, your life as like traveling and seeing that your dad was going through the military, has that persuaded you to go to want to go to the military? And how was that lifestyle like? Was you um? Did you feel like you was missing out on childhood things like meeting friends that you could grow up with for a long time, or um, you know, just how was that experience traveling? How did it affect you? I should say, how did it affect you traveling from state to state, seeing that your parents wasn't, you know, not saying in a stable home, but like everywhere y'all went, you had to leave due to, you know, traveling. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. But I mean, I like, <laughs> I laugh because, well, basically it was my grandpa that was in the army. So my dad basically took, a whole nother route like my dad was like in prison at the time for a majority of my life so he actually didn't get out of jail until i was a freshman in high school and so that's why i didn't even really talk about my dad you know <laughs> uh so honestly from that it's like like yeah like i didn't have friends growing up i was like by myself and i i was like <laughs> they tell me at the age of seven i was already persuaded to join the military myself so mm -hmm. by the age of seven, like that's when like they kind of like predetermined my life for me, you know, putting me in private schools, military schools, you know, it was kind of all set up for me at that point. But I mean, yeah, like when it goes to like the social aspect of like growing up, I didn't really have it when like I would say the first time I actually like started having my own group of friends was at Excel, you know, like mm -hmm. I won't I won't really like say elementary because that's when I like, kind of lost track of like majority of the people. Uh, I still talk to the people from the Sims, but like even at high school, I don't like, I still really like, when it comes to like having that social like connection with people is very few, but I would say I'd rather have four quarters over a hundred pennies any day, you know, that's the type of like uh, environment I want 
or the people I want around me at the end of the day, because like anyone can say they're your friend, anyone can say like they're an associate, you know, but I want those people who are actually like there in my life and like mean it at this point. So it's like, yeah, I met various people from around the world, but like it's those people like you want to connect with at the end of the day, because those are the ones who are like, they're just as curious, just just as open-minded as you, you know? Like Mm -hmm. if you guys, like, I'm not saying those who like have their social settings are like, it's set in stone. I'm saying like, we have to be open to make new friends as well along in the process. That's more so what I'm saying. And they gotta be like, they gotta be the quarters instead of the pennies. So it's quality over quantity any day. But like when it goes, like, yeah, like I didn't have friends and I'm not really ashamed of like not having friends, you know, it's like, it's just like, I mean, I very I have few friends that help me with college work or stuff like that, you know, not everyone can help me. Hmm. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Uh but yeah, was there any any other question? I think I see one. I mean, but yeah, like growing up, I mean, it was kind of cool being on the military bases and all of that stuff, you know, but besides that, like, and okay, let me, and that brings me back to my other point. So when I was actually in the military school and like, we was being taught about all these military tactics and like how to like uh, break a finger and all this type of a thing, and, like how, like all the different angles of attacks and stuff like that. I really started to ask myself like real questions in life. Like, do I really want to be like a killer for somebody else that really isn't like benefiting us or our people, you know? And that's when like like started becoming more of an activist and started becoming like more rebellious, I guess you would say, because I was just like seeing the system for what it was at that point. I was I would say that was when I was like getting my like first like when I was first waking it up to like really what's going on in today's society. Like I would say what happened at like the Silence Fayola, the like that military school is like really what like catapulted catapulted me to like where I am right now, you know. I went from just like this school that was like no other in like DPS to like East High School, you know. And at East, I'm gonna say I had one of the worst school experiences for me personally. Like I, I'm not an angel, you know. I wasn't perfect, <laughs> you know. I made mistakes. I got kicked out in the first. Well, I got kicked out of freshman academy. And then I got kicked out of like actual like freshman year. So, I mean, a life happens, you know. Uh, it's meant life is meant to be about growth you know it's not meant to be in the same position as you were yesterday so like I'm gonna just like leave it at that you know mistakes were made you know (laughs) but going on from that like transferring from east to MLK so well basically like my family like was not like happy about me getting just kicked out altogether over just some petty stuff at east high school you know so they kind of put up a fight you know with DPS and basically uh, at that point, I had to be transferred to the other other side of the district at MLK. And so before this process, I had to like wait like a whole semester basically. So until then I was like on house arrest until like I can get back into school basically. And so I'm gonna just say like during that time, like I would say like it was like quarantine y'all. Like I was just in the house, like man, I was going crazy. I was reading books. I was like doing pushups, you know, but by the, uh, well, basically, okay, so what got me kicked out of school was just hanging with the wrong crowd, man. I'm a, I'm a, okay, y'all want the real story? <laughs> can I can I be honest, Phil? <laughs> Please be honest. That's all we do is we keep it 100%. On me, okay. Well, <laughs> so I got kicked out of Freshman Academy just like, I ain't like the deans. Mr. Me and Mr. Barry just like, we just had beef. Like, I'm just like... Like, I ain't like him, he ain't like me. I ain't like Mr. Sinclair, none of them. Like, Mr. Sinclair especially. <laughs> but Okay, so from just like the relationship I built up with them during Freshman Academy kind of like messed me over in the long run. I'm gonna say it like that. So I got into an incident. Well, there was two incidents more so. The first time I got kicked out of homecoming for just, uh, well, I didn't even get kicked out of homecoming. I didn't even get let in. So I'm gonna just say <laughs> Um, <laughs> I got stopped at the at the desk right there. They was like, "Yeah, man, you can't even come in here like that." Uh, it was either that or it's like it was either get hit with like suspension or a ticket. I took the suspension. My family wasn't happy about that. Uh, and then, like right, the second time, 
just like I was in this classroom. Uh, I was in this classroom. It was like the class before lunch time, before lunch period. And if you've ever been to the East, like the lunch period gets crazy, basically. And so this kid, like in the same class as me, I don't like, man, I don't even know what, man, this, like, our, okay, so I'm going to use a term that they use at Sims Fayola. They call it a grenade. And so this grenade. You said a grenade? Huh? You said grenade? Yeah. Okay. So this grenade basically is like, if you get in trouble, it's like those around you get in trouble. That's how like Sims brought us up. So mm. it's like, if like, if our, if our friend got in trouble, we would get in trouble, like unintentionally, intentionally, you know, just because mm. it was around him. So I got hit with a grenade basically in this scenario. Mm. So uh, this kid, he stole this laptop from this white boy in class. Uh, and I guess he put it in my backpack and then didn't tell me till the last minute, basically. And like, like basically I was just like this nonchalant, didn't care, like, yeah, we just gonna do it and make some money. Like, you know, like I'm not really doing it. I'm not, I'm just there basically. And at this point, the kid found out that his laptop was stolen. And then every minority from the class was like brought in at this point question. Well, before that, <laughs> well, yeah, every minority was brought in, but the minorities, like the kids of color before me, they kind of told us at lunchtime, like, yeah, they looking for so-and-so and so-and-so, <laughs> you feel me? Like, they was like, yeah, don't go back. And so, you know, like, man, like, just because I didn't care didn't mean I wasn't going to not be at school. So, like, of course, I'm not really worried. They got the laptop. It's not like it's on me no more, you know? I'm just like, man, I'm going about my day. <laughs> Uh, and so I go to my next class after lunch, and that's when the deans come find me. And so they're like, yeah, we just want to talk to you real quick. If you got anything on you that's not needed, make sure you throw it away right now. You know, they're giving me the whole little spill. And then I get in there, and they're looking for a laptop, basically, right? <laughs> I didn't have a laptop, though. Uh, but at lunchtime, like, I happen to, like, remember, like, dang, I just, like, <laughs> Ooh, like I just copped a blunt you feel me like this is Colorado like like and this is the access to like weed is everywhere so this is my freshman year you feel me I'm just like man I don't care I'm about to smoke you feel me like so I get into the dean's room I forget until the last minute that this is in my backpack and then at that point I'm I'm sweating you feel me I'm sweating I'm like man I hope they don't see the the baggie I'm like like, I'm like, I'm trying to hurry them up. Like, you don't see no, like, laptop. Like, can I get my bag back? <laughs> and then, like, my goofy self, I get the opportunity, like, to pick it up. Like, pick up my bag of weed, basically. And I try to throw it away, like, on some slickness. You feel me? Like, man, I could have swore I was the slickest person in the room. Like, <laughs> so basically, I made it into the trash can. But he seen me throw it into the trash can at that point. And then it, it just went uphill from there. And that was, like, my last straw for East, basically. So <laughs> I got caught up for some goofy stuff uh, for the lease. And then it wasn't worth it <laughs> as well. But I mean, hey, you live and you learn. Like I said, it's in the past. Like I'm not tripping off of it. It's just one of those things that you kind of just like, you build on top of that, you know? Like <laughs> you can't go no low from there, you feel me? And so like after being on like on house arrest for uh, like, uh, drugs on school property and all this type of stuff and like all of that basically I go to MLK and at MLK is like it's Montbello it's more like me you know so at that point I was like I was like I'm gonna just like straighten myself up you know like I I wanted to graduate that was one thing I knew for sure it was like I just like I had to graduate you know graduation which is one of those things I just had to get done I I couldn't be a statistic like just a number, you know? So like I busted my butt, like I was behind in credits, you know, like I wasn't in school for a whole semester. So I had to start like that, uh, the new year, like behind track, you know, like already, <laughs> you feel me? Like just started high school and already behind track. Like that's not like what I foreseen for myself in the future. So I made sure that wasn't gonna be what was like meant for me, you know? So basically I took summer school for my sophomore junior year for like two years straight, basically. Uh, 
I was in student council, you feel me? I was basically the perfect student, you feel me? I mean, I had a couple other incidents, I ain't gonna lie, but for the most part, like I stayed on track, you feel me? It wasn't nothing big to like, nothing big to basically like to mess up my educational path. And so, so I was in the, I was in debate. <laughs> I went to, I won, well, and let me talk about that. So after you talk about like, just like all the stuff, all the bad stuff you did, like all of that, you know? It's just like, let me talk about some achievements, you know? So like after just like everything I went through with all the previous schools with like the private school, the military school, man, my experience at East, I can't even say I went there really. I like at MLK, I, I knew I wanted different for myself. And so I, I did everything I really didn't want to do, I would say. I joined debate. I didn't want to do, do it at first, but after like, I left debate with two city championships. I went to nationals twice, you know? I made over a uh, hundred arguments with various topics. Uh, well, we had three major topics for my sophomore, junior and senior year, which were the, the China, South China Sea. It was the mega like mass data collection. And then it was just policies, school policies, basically. And so why wouldn't you wanna, so why wouldn't you wanna do debate? I mean, I like, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it like it's something positive. It's a pro-social activity that's outside of school. It's not something that's, you know what I mean, negative or anything like that. But the, the, the stigma that is put on of something positive like debate is kind of cornballish. Right. Exactly. So like, that was, like, that was exactly my, my first impression. Like, dang, they, they really going to know me as a nerd. You feel me? Like, they really going to think, like, I'm, like, really reading, you feel me? <laughs> like, I'm reading out loud at that. So, and that was just one of those, like, the things I didn't want to. But it's like, I look back and, like, man, if I wasn't, like, public speaking then, I couldn't be public speaking now, you know? Can you all hear me? All right, just making sure. So, I mean, like, yeah, like, I, like, I was too concerned about people's, opinions on me at the time but after I like I kind of broke through that fear it was only up from there you know and that was just in debate so like and not like I've like okay like there would be times someone would beat me like they would argue the best case and I would just I would be so like butt hurt over it I'm just like man they ain't even that smart but the judge gave them the point because in debate it was all based on like how well you could persuade someone or how well you can like, like opinionate yourself, you know? It was all about that. It was all about finesse when I really learned about it. And when I learned that it was all about finesse, I was like, okay, this is more my game. This is more my style. And that's when I started like seeing like how it didn't matter what others think of you. It matters how you see it yourself, you know? So that's more so what I gained from it. It's all about how you define stuff because like, man, if you listen to others, like, majority of, majority of the times, like, like, a fool, man, fools will follow a, another fool to hell. I'm going to tell you like that. Like, it's, it's just, not, you can't argue with a fool either. You feel me? Facts. And so that's, like, just one thing I learned, like, along the process. It's like, those who listen, they're going to, like, all right, that was... I, like I hear you. Like I'm not just like I'm not just listening. I hear you. Like it's connected. I'm connecting dots, and that's what I learned in debate. Most people are only taught to listen, but in debate, we're taught to like listen and hear and feel you. You know, and so that brings me to my other like other achievements I did basically. And so that brings me to like when I was in engineering, you know, and I built my first like robot, you know or I built my first program with like H, well, I built my first website with HTML and I published my first like app with like uh, this MIT app creator, you know? So it was like with these skill sets, I was able to do things I wasn't really thinking of. I, I, well, I wasn't thinking I could do at the time, you know? But life is all about growth. It's not about, um, my charge is about to die. Let me, I mean, my laptop's about to die. So I just need to get that.
All right, can you guys hear me? All right, so when I was in CT, like they, well, it's, it's called CTE engineering, but it's also called uh, concurrent enrollment. My bad, my internet went off on my laptop. Can you guys hear me? Yes, indeed. Okay, yeah, I don't know why my internet is working on my laptop, but okay. So anywho, when I started CTE engineering, that's when like I actually like felt smart, you know, besides just like what I was reading about in debate, you know, because in debate I had to read so many articles. And like let me tell you guys, like I still read as many articles as I did in high school as I do today consistently, you know. And I actually know how to apply that knowledge now though too. But that's the main difference, you know, between who I was and who I am now. Who I was didn't know how to apply much of the not much of the knowledge I knew, like the new me does, you know? This new me tries to find ways to apply the stuff I know every day. Like, I'm a hustler at, at heart, you know? I was like, I was one of those people who was selling the, like the world's finest chocolate and trying to get the top, like the top sale, you feel me? I was All always right. like, and so when I had like, when I had, when I really gained the entrepreneur mindset, that's when it, like everything just changed for me in high school because at that point, oh. Damn, it's bad. okay. At that point, what I had to do was just stay on track. That was like my main focus when I was like there and doing it, you know, because I was doing so much at MLK, like. I don't think I could have did it at East at this point because I was traveling to New York City because I had business connections with some organizations out there called Grip Tape that I had met during like student council meetings. You tell me? Mm. So right, it was got, like, my bad. We got two questions. Okay, we got yeah. uh, one. Uh, Aja had asked, "What was the app? Like, how does it work?" Okay, so it was called Scratch. And basically, right. it was just like you would take a color, you would take a, you would use your phone, take a picture of a color you see, and then you would take that color and you'll paint a picture, and then you, it was just like like an app, uh, what do you call that? It was like a painting app, basically, you know. Mm. So it's okay. just, but you can also use the photos you took, and you can put them in your pictures to draw on them as well. That was like one of my like added features. Okay. Uh, Tank, what you got? All right. Um, pause that real quick. Um, my question to you, with knowing how known East is nationwide, do you feel like if you were to make better decisions at East, you would have the chance to do what you did at um, MLK at East with a little better, um, with a little better help, or do you like the path that you went down, as in had to get in trouble just to learn that the trouble life isn't the life that is going to help you be successful? I mean, like yeah, you got to really think about it. You got to really break it down. At East, there are so many people. That means there's competition. There's people that are like gonna take the opportunities that you are looking for, stuff like that. I wasn't having that mindset when I was at MLK. So when I was like getting like excellent test scores, I'm like good at public speaking at this point. Like I just had everything, like I was just like check, 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 check. You feel me? So it was like when I put my resume or you know, I showed up, you feel me, on time. Like it was just a done deal. I was I was the, always the one getting the opportunities at MLK. I'm gonna just tell you like that, and I would see it like the same way 
a white person would see at East, you know? That's how it was for me at MLK. So what I'm gonna say is no regrets because what everything happened for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, I'm, gonna, I'm going to make it all make sense by staying on this track. Mm -hmm. There's no regrets. There's no hesitation. <laughs> There's no reservation. It's always a hundred, especially when it comes to your dream, you know? There you go. And so I say that to say like every achievement that I've like made connected me to the next person, to the next milestone. And I don't think I would have ever got that at East or even got the opportunity with my mindset at that time. I, it took some challenge to get and get getting kicked out. You know, <laughs> you got to see downs before you see the ups. And so that brings me to my next point when I actually started college, because that was like the next biggest thing, I guess you would say, because like a lot of like, well, you know how they first say, well, F Mr. Phil might feel me on this, but when you start freshman year, it's like you got a hundred friends. You feel me? Like, man, I came in like high school deep, not worried about a thing. I wish somebody would test me. But I mean, as the years went on, we dwindled out. Some of us died, some of us went to jail. Like, it's sad. I, I, that's one thing I try not to look back on because just I wish I could have helped more people. I wish I could have brought some people with me. There are some people that should have been with me to this day, but they're not. And I can't do nothing at that point, you know? So what I can do is make sure like Wait, nothing, everything that we did together is not in vain. Like art, like basically, I'm gonna tell you like this. Their story dies when mine does. Mm. At this point, that's like go. kind of how I'm living my life now. <clears throat> I mean, so, how does it work too when you have those who don't mimic how you're living? For instance, I had a homie who he had a lot of friends get killed, and each friend that got killed, he kept their name alive by putting it as a Facebook name, whatever it is. You know what I mean? But then when he had got killed, I don't see anybody keeping his name alive and everybody else who name he kept alive. You know what I mean? So how does it, how do you, how do you change that energy? How do you shift that energy when you see that, you know, it's not being reciprocal? And that's when I would say like reinvest into those who are like, who see it. Mm. Like I have some little bros, you know, like, I ain't gonna expect like my actual bros like that are my age keep living on in my name. But I'm expecting all my little brothers and those who like really know me and know the game that I'm living to like keep on doing what I'm doing. So I would say it more like that. It's like we keeping like we keeping the fire here. Like we ain't passed the torch yet. And so at that point, we're gonna grow the fire until it gets a lot bigger, until it gets attractive, until others want to. That's like more so like my idea about it. You know, others may have various opinions. But like, as long as like somebody's doing what I'm like, well, honestly, at this point, like I'm gonna get to, okay. I'm going too fast, gotta slow down. What am I doing now? Like what, what's so attractive, you know? What's, what's the big talk? Uh, can I share my screen, Mr. Phil? Yes, please. All right. So this is like what I be do. This is what I do now. So like I'm an investor now. So when I first started college. Check this out, Tank. It was just asking I was at about this. Denver for computer science. And so basically I learned all about currencies and mm. really where our 401ks are, uh, the financial markets, all of it. I learned how to like read it, not only read it, but to make money off of it and to live off of it. And so like I could, well, but. So you're saying from, from the scribble and scrabbles and dots and stuff that's on this paper right here, you make money off of this? Listen. Yes, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. You know what I mean? For sure. 
Um, I ain't going to lie to you. It's still scribbles and scribbles. <laughs> Jamar. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you brought this up. I was just about to ask you, what are you doing now? Um, Because I'm definitely intrigued in learning about this. I know it, it's very complex because like every program that I didn't try to go through to learn more about um, currency exchange or just investment opportunities, like I created me a, a Robin Hood account. Right. Do you know about that? Yes. But the thing yeah. about Robin Hood, that's more so for investing. Yeah. When I'm talking about like leverage trading, because that's really what this is. So is that currency? Leverage trading is. Yeah, it's still the currency exchange, but it's about how you're investing. Okay. You know, that's like where it is now. That's like really what they don't teach us. How are we investing? So do you do like so, uh, money management and things like help people manage their money by investing or learning things like this so they know where their money's going and how to do it? I mean, yeah, like I will share like all the knowledge I know, you know, but when it comes to actual money management, I feel like I'm working for you at that point. So I don't do that. Right. Yeah, for sure. But if you look on the right where I'm like kind of where my mouse is, this is just where this is what we call the price action. And so for it to move a pit and a Jamar, pit let me let me pause you real fast. I, I apologize. I meant to ask you on the beginning if I could record this this conversation. Oh no, yeah, you're yeah. fine. All right, appreciate it. And we got a uh, we got a hand too. Um, don't forget what you're talking about, the pips. Don't forget that. Uh Lejeje, right. what was you gonna ask? Um, being like investing and stuff, like what was your business big? Biggest investment and like, is it anybody who taught you how to invest in, in like different things? I mean, when you ask me what's my biggest investment and did I like did I have someone who like to teach me? Yeah, I feel like those are two different things. Because I would say my biggest investment was always myself. And so I say that to say like, man, when it comes to like what I was putting on myself. There's no cap. Education, making sure I'm happy, food, you feel me? I'm my biggest investment every single day. But when I like, when it comes to like having a mentor and like stuff like that, like I have, like Mr. Phil's my mentor, you know, like that's, this is a mental, like with him, it's like, it's chess, not checkers, you feel me? You can't play him like no regular chess player. And so when you go into this, it's like the same thing, you know? It's, this is like this is like trading, not investing. You know, this is a whole different beast that people stop at investing. But after investing, there's trading. So this is what okay. happens after I give my money to um one of these to buy okay. a share or a stock. Like I'm confused still. No, even if you have a bank account, they're trading in this market. Okay. You know that 0 0.001 for like interest of like what yeah. you get back or what you have in your account. This is from this. They're trading your money. If you used to act like have a thousand dollars in your account and you ask for that, like, well, let's make it more, let's say 30K, you know, and you ask for that 30K up front, you no, know, that day without like asking them or any of that, they're going to say they don't have it because it's in this market. And that's why it's so easy for people's money to be taken from banks. So is our money in the banks? Are they, is it insured? How do we, we were just talking about that. So. So your money is, is insured to FDIC. Right. But like more than hundred K, like they can't save you. But this is also the most volatile market, you know? So that's why it's like, there's risk always involved. And I bring that risk because like when I was getting in trouble in high school and middle school, you know, like it costs to be a boss, you know? <laughs> like seriously at this point, because when we're trading, like we could trade anything like this is the British pound and the Japanese yen. If you look up in the left corner, 
And so, like, that's just something I look at because the British pound is one of the most strongest currency after the dollar. Mm -hmm. But another thing I've been looking at is U.S. oil. Everyone's been talking about how oil dropped. Yeah. This is what it looks like. This is where it went. Y'all see how it went? Negative 10 cents? Mm Mm-hmm. This is what like all the news outlets are like talking about, but if you don't have the knowledge, you won't be able to apply any of this stuff or capitalize off of any of it. So this is what you went to school for? <laughs> I didn't go to school for this. Oh, so you, you self-educated? <laughs> I did, yes. But like I said, I have many mentors that I ran across that kind of like, you know, put some wood in the fire for me. Yeah, for sure. I knew how to penny, like, I knew how to, like, penny stock trading in high school. I wasn't trading within the Forex market until college. And so, like, at this point, it's like most of my friends right now, like, they're dependent on a job to make their money. Like, I, I'm dependent on money to make more money. My money is constantly making itself. Uh, I got a question. Where does the trend show you? Okay, so basically, uh, for this question, uh, our current cash isn't in no bank. Well, for me, I keep a, like a little bit of money kind of spread out in different accounts. Like I have a Coinbase where I'm investing to like cryptocurrencies, you know, like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ripple. Mm-hmm. A Litecoin, you know, and then I have a Robinhood, and that's where I'm investing to like my Adidas, my Nike, stuff like that, you know. And then I have my Ameritrade as well, that um, uh, my grandfather set up, and then that's when I first started like to trade in high school. Well, not trade, investing. I was investing in, like just like different oils and stuff like that, and then I have like an offshore broker account, and this is where. Well, from my offshore broker account, this is where I can trade the currencies. And I'm able, and since it's an offshore broker account, our US dollars are given a stronger, um, what do you say? Like they're worth more when I trade it with them than if I was to trade with an American broker. Because American brokers are gonna tax you more, are gonna need a little more capital upfront, all of it, you know? So it's just like these different loopholes that they don't really teach us that like this is how the rich are like really finessing the game. Right, exactly. So I have a question. I'm sorry. I was super intrigued. Um, so what what would you do? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. All right. What could you, how old are you? 20 now. You're 20? Mm-hmm. Oh, hell yeah. I admire you for sure. Um, what could you do, right? Because you know this and you know that our community is lacking um, knowledge about things like this, especially in, our, in the young community. Like you're 20 years old. You're about to be a billionaire soon because you know you have these skills. You've acquired these skills and this knowledge. So what could you do um, to help the community with the knowledge that you know about these things? Because I think this type of thing, Wall Street and just investment, like, we're lacking that in our community. And this is like you said, how white people is finessing and um, like moving our money and doing all these things. And it's super interesting. I know a lot of young people who's interested in learning about it. Like what could you possibly do to help that? Right. So I have been working with another organization and it's like the official educational platform for uh, like for those learning how to trade. Yeah. But I'm not really big on like network marketing. Okay. You know? I'm not like super into that, I guess you would say. But I love trading. You know? Okay. So it's like if the, if they ask and they're like if they have like because like this educational platform ain't free, you know. I'm not the one to kind of like make people spend their bread or anything like that. You know, so I'll give them all the free information I know. But when it can't, comes down to it, oh crap. Like this is really where like it first started for me. So uh gotta move this over. Okay. Okay. 
academies. So I've been kind of like, well, before like COVID-19 and all of that, I've been like hosting like meetings, Zoom calls, you know, all of that to like share as much information as I can to whoever is like really interested in it, you know? Okay. Like I ain't gonna like make sure people are like making money. Like, no, I ain't like right. that. But if they trying to make money, they they know where to hit me. Like I, I respond back. All right, because I definitely want to pick your brain. And uh I definitely I was reading through the Robin Hood um like disclosures and just trying to get as much knowledge as I can, although the language in there I'm not too familiar with, right? So then I would go with you and ask you a couple questions because I don't have anybody like no white people on Wall Street that I can directly access to ask certain questions that they might know. So I definitely want to keep you around, not to sound crazy, but I want to ask you a couple questions. Definitely. But like you guys can see this. It's like I went through all of these back in uh what like well, I started trading as soon as I left high school. So that's when I like like read all of these, well, watched all of these videos from like A to Z, you know? Like what is Forex? History of Forex, you know? Right. Like what is trading Forex? Market participants, you know? So it's like, yes, you gotta program? have a different vocabulary. Right. Huh? This is this is a free program? It's not free. Okay. But this is like one of the official educational platforms for like those who learn who want to learn how to trade. Oh, dope. Yes, let me write that down. But like this is when like most of the people that I was like either in college with or those who like didn't go into college, I was grinding like my whole time in college basically trying to learn all of this. Like every single one of these videos, I watched them more than once. When I was talking, uh, telling you guys about what is a pip, like all right, let me finish what a pip is. This is the most important thing. So basically, you guys see how price is at, uh, okay. You guys see how price is at 13.03. All right, for it to move a pip up, and a pip will be 13.04. It takes so a what billion does that mean? If, if it moves up one pip, what does that mean? It takes a billion dollars to move a pip. It takes a billion dollars to move up one pip. Yes. So how's the pip affect your money? <laughs> uh, basically, if you see the move. So that's all you watch them for. On how much money you have in this like broker account? You can multiply that. Did you hear me? Yeah. So they just sit up here and watch for the pip to move. Not just pips. Like we catch all of these. Like we catch all of these. That's why I'm like, there are people like. Well, uh, have you guys heard of like a hedge fund and stuff like that? Yes. Familiar. Well, like, yeah, they get like a hundred million a month. Just because of stuff like this. And this is where it's like, it's like, it's almost certain. They got it down to a science. And we call it technical analysis. So, so right now you don't have another job, right? I mean, well, I still take contracts, but I mean, if I don't have to work, I won't. Contracts for what? Well, helping like DPS. You know, like helping like some of the nonprofits that kind of like that kind of helped me get to where I am, you know. What do you do for these DPS and nonprofits? Like I used to do a lot of like uh talks on equity, uh okay. like microaggressions and all of that type of a thing. Like what when I was in student council, you know, all of that, you know. That is amazing. So what's the minimum amount of money that you like? start your broker account or your offshore account or like what's the minimum amount of money you would need it depends on how much you're trying to see back in return right okay so well, if you're trying to see like good profit i would say play around with 100 200 dollars yeah oh well it's like okay cool sorry guys I mean, Wait, I got a question. <laughs> yeah. 
how long did it take you day in and day out to learn the um investing and trading because i do things like that too but i'm not like official i should say like i i watch videos day in and day out like i'm a nerd when it comes to social media trying to better my life and better things like how long did it take you to start making the money that you make and having the knowledge that you have that's a very good question uh well when i first started trading i made 43 dollars to be exact like now if I like test myself, well, not even test myself. If I'm just like playing around with the market, I could take a hundred dollars into a thousand in a week. If I put pressure, I can make a thousand like in just a New York session. What does that mean? Like that's just a time frame. So New York session for us in Denver, Colorado starts at 5 p.m. till 12. Okay. So it's like from the morning when the stock market opens, you have until five o'clock to 12 to kind of like catch any of our pairs. So when I say pairs, I'm talking about like US dollar versus the Japanese yen right here in the left corner. Mm -hmm. Or US Wall Street, US 30. And this is like the top 30 companies in the US. This is the majority of like what runs the U.S. When they talk about uh, the Dow Jones, that's this. So it's like the sky's the limit when you mess around with it. But there's also, there's always going to be a risk involved. Like I can make thousands and I can lose thousands, you know? Right. But it's like, you have to be okay with it. You have to accept it. And that's just like one of those things as a trader, as like I kind of signed up for, you know? It sounds like gambling. Eh, it's only gambling if you like don't know what you're doing. And so, yes, we don't want to, we don't want to gamble. Oh, you're on mute. I mean, I mean, you said you got to prepare yourself for the loss. You know what I mean? That, that sounds... You know, like gambling, even if you do know the trade, even if you do have the skill, if you're saying prepare yourself for the loss. Well, when I say prepare for the loss, I'm preparing for like, where are you prepared to, like, what are you willing to lose? That's more what a, of what I meant, you know? Mm. So if you have $100 mm. in that account, let's say you're not, you're not willing to risk no more than 20%. Or twenty dollars. So that's kind of mm. like what we're supposed to think of as traders. But sometimes, like we get greedy, we like, man, we know we can make like however much money in the market, you know. But then it's like you got to take that money and leave because we there's also what we call market manipulation, and that's kind of what happened to U.S. oil. That's why it shot down like this. And whoever sold it may bank. Mm. And Congress people, CEOs, janitors, principals, students like myself, we can all trade. Even felons. This is an offshore broker account. They're not connected with the US. So how long does it take for you to get your money? Like if I was to, you know what I mean? Just be like, all right, I want my money now. It's my money and I need it now. That J.A.G. Wentworth. Three hours. Oh, three hours? I'm good. Yeah, because it has to be sent from your broker account. I mean, okay, so it's like on this, well, let me pull it up. It's on this little app like this. You know, it looks okay. like this. And you take it from this to our broker account. And now, is my screen still sharing? Yeah. Okay, so, and this, this is like my bank, my, my offshore broker account. So you, so, so you actually- I want money, Like it goes from just like, hmm? Go ahead, I'm listening. 
So we'll take whatever money we make, we'll go to this website, and then we just send it to our bank account. And, or you can have a Coinbase and it takes even less time. It would probably take like an hour. And you have access to that money to spend in America. Whenever. And I can actually like transfer it to any currency I need, you know? British pound, euros. Uh, it's actually how I kind of create different banking accounts in different countries. Mm. Is what it is. So I, I mean, like, yeah, the power of technology. Man. How you deal with how you deal with you being so young and having this knowledge? Do you ever feel pressure like um, you know, these people are older than me, so they may not listen to me? I mean, I used to feel like that. Then I just stopped caring. Ah, there you uh, go. Okay. I kind of um dang. Like I gotta pull up this quote. I just posted it too. It's like when you lose your excuses, you see all your results. Okay. Mm. So I kind of like, when I first started seeing my profit, I stopped caring about what older, older people would think about me in the market, you know? I stopped mm. caring about like how much money are they making compared to how much money I'm making. Okay. And that's where I would say like the difference came in. But now it's like, I know we're at the same level. Period. What interest did you in getting involved with trading at first, in the beginning? I mean, well, my grandpa, the person who was in the military, who did right. all this stuff, like, he was an accountant when he came back, like to the country, to this country. Because when he was like in the military, he went to like different parts of the world. Like he was in China, Germany, Greece, all of it, you know? But when he came back, he became back only to become an accountant. And so when I really like learned about like just like money management, all of that different types of a thing, it kind of just like clicked for me, you know? Like, okay, this is why my grandpa was so interested in it, you know? This is why he got all these books on it. Mm. So, like, I didn't see the interest back then. But, like, now, I mean, the more I learn, the more I'm, like, appreciating him for, like, kind of what he, like, offered me before, like, you know, he got sick, you know? Right, mm. for sure. So, I mean, if you guys got any questions, feel free to ask. I felt like my story isn't like all that long, you know, we still living. Right, you're young. <laughs> all right, so on that note, on that note, if there's one thing that you can leave us with, if we didn't hear anything that you have said this whole time, if there's one thing, one message that you can leave us with, what would be that message? I have to leave. Keep it simple. It doesn't matter how you start. The only thing that matters is how you finish. Yes, indeed. And it's Wait, the marathon, yeah, not a race. Oh, uh, yeah. What's your question? Um, how does telling your story? Um, how would I ask this question? It's telling. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I ask this right. I don't know. How does the art of storytelling impact your life? Like when you were growing up, hearing other stories. How did it impact your life? And then now that you had the chance to share your stories with kids your age, um, men and women older than you, and uh, just like, how did that impact your life? How did the art of storytelling impact your life? How did it influence you to do it now? Well, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna compare it to something. I was like, basically the way I see like storytelling, it's the same way as someone would see traveling to a different city, you know? You're gaining a new perspective. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they kind of opened your eyes to a world you didn't see before. Mm -hmm. As I will hope I kind of opened your eyes to a world you've never seen before, as I wish someone would have did with me. There you go. Yeah, definitely. 
So, I mean, that's as, as simple as I can get, you know. If you guys got any more questions, Mr. Phil got my number, got my, my all my socials. You can just connect y'all to me, you know, it's nothing. I yes, owe him this, you know, like, like he owes me a couple of chess games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> man. We're going to definitely get it. We're going to definitely get it. Jamar, you know, we're Charlotte. We surely appreciate your time, man. Um, I appreciate your story. I appreciate your grit. You keep gritting, you know, because right now you standing alone. You was a, you was a lone sheep. You was a black, what they call them, a black sheep. You know, just you being in your own element, you being in your own zone, you not doing what everybody else is doing, puts you apart from everybody else. And that's why I, I, I salute you. You know what I mean? And I appreciate you coming in for our art storytelling, man. All right? So at the end of every session that we do, I count to three, and we all snap our fingers. All right? Never did the uh, compliments, comments, none of that. That's the class, uh, YT. Huh? That's the class, little one, sure, period. Oh, OK. <laughs> all right. Uh, comments? Oh, so we are going to do all Compliment, Compliments. We're going to do it just because you want to. Compliments. Yes, I do. Right, go I definitely ahead. got a comment and a compliment. <laughs> go ahead, then. So, Jamar, I definitely am going to take you up on that offer about reaching out. So definitely remember my face. My name is Cameo, and I uh, work with Phil. So I'm definitely going to reach out to you, like I said, to pick your brain if that's OK. I definitely, you know, shit. Com um, you know, I can't spend too much money, but I definitely will compensate you uh, for your time because I definitely want to learn some stuff. And I just admire you, like I said earlier, because you're young and you you got so much knowledge, dude, that people that are older than us don't have. Um, and I think we need to be able to spread that so that a youth our age could like, you know, do some stuff with that, with the knowledge that you have. And I just admire you a lot and keep going. And all right, I'm done. Already. Oh, thank uh, you. When COVID nineteen starts up again, we're gonna start hosting more meetings for everybody. But until then, you know, it's all through Zoom. Okay. Already, I'm gonna link you on Facebook. All right, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, that's it. Peace. Right on, right on, Jamar. I'm about that's to call you, so answer. Bye, guys. All right. all right, peace out. I'm gonna check I'll in with care. you. Peace.